Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the Smallitics YouTube channel. Today I have a really special video for you guys. I'm interviewing longtime community member, short girl gang member, Jenny. She's lost 45 pounds since we started working together following the Smallitics method. She has done several rounds of the Petite Power program and I'm just so excited to finally bring her on the channel and interview her so that you guys can see how possible it is for you to achieve the same things she has in her mindset and physical changes. So we're gonna talk about everything that she changed to lose the weight and keep it off in the long term and find a really sustainable lifestyle that she now lo lives and loves. I also wanna let you guys know that enrollment into the Petite Power Program, which is our 12 week transformation fitness and nutrition program for petite women is taking clients right now just for a few days only. So if you are interested in joining, check out the link below. We're just opening up the doors for a few days and we would absolutely love to work with you if you are a petite woman looking to lose fat, build muscle, and live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle that you love. All right, without further ado, here is the chat with Jenny. I hope you guys love it. And remember to give this video a like to support the channel. To kick it off, I want to start with, because a lot of people have probably seen you around in the community, but they don't know that you lost, it's over 40 pounds, right, at this point? Yeah, well, yeah, it's around 45, yeah. Yeah, 45 mm -hmm. from 175 or 8 to 140 mm -hmm. or 133. Did I get those numbers mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, f I would love to just take everybody back to where you started because we started working together in uh, early 2018. No, 2019. We started in 2019. Yeah. So My brain year. is so bad with time. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So, but let's take everybody back to um, mm -hmm. even actually before we started working together, where you were back when it all started, your fitness journey, um, what, where you were at physically, where you were at mentally, and what started this whole journey for you. It really dates back to essentially like 2016. I had just lost a lot of weight. Like I went, like I had lost like 20 pounds and I had gotten down to only like a little bit bigger than what I am right now, but like around the same size. Um, and I had lost all the weight through like different means. And then it like slowly, like I just like gained it back. It just came back. And by that time, like that, like puts me in like 2017. I was at around my the highest weight, which was 175 around there. And I like, I don't know, I felt really defeated at that point. So throughout that year, like 2017, like I had a lot of shame because of how much weight I had gained so fast after having lost so much weight. Cause it was like the highest I had ever been at that point. So then in 2018, when like I, fully started to like try and attempt the whole thing over again. Like I had gotten to a place where I was trying to accept my size more and I'd gotten pretty good at that. Like mental health wise, like I think I wasn't like being so harsh to myself words wise. Um, and then like the reason why I decided to try to lose weight again is because like there's like one event in particular that I um, I was trying to come up the stairs like I was like running up the stairs and it was like a flight of like 14 steps and like halfway through I was like winded like I, I could not like hold a conversation like after that and I like I know that a lot of like medical like problems like lying in my family you know like diabetes and stuff so I was more worried about like my health at that point so I was like I need to do something about it and I started the whole trying to like watch what I ate and like trying to work out like once or twice a week at that point and that year I lost 10 pounds like in 2018 and it was really slow <laughs> like it was just like for maybe like a pound a month maybe it was but that's only because like I knew I had lost weight really fast the last time and it didn't work so I just didn't want to do what I did before and by the end of 2018 when I had lost those 10 pounds is when I was on Instagram and I found your page and I stalked you <laughs> like I just like stopped the page and I was like and I don't know like, I, like it was like a weird connection because like I'm like it's the fact that you were my height like I could see like you know you know resemblance and like that I could relate to because if you look at a magazine like they're all tall and yeah. um <laughs> so like I, I could relate to it and I stalked it and like it was a very big like conversation on whether or not I should like do the program or not so 
eventually I was like, okay, you know what? I don't, I don't know what else to do. So then I just like, I bit the bullet and I like started working with you. And that's kind of like where my head was at then. I just like, okay. I, I didn't know what else to try. And at that point were you, I know you said you took uh, some time and you lost weight really slowly, but at that point, were you working out? Were you restricting? Like, what did you do that year to lose weight previously? So that year I tried the, cause intuitive eating was like all the hype. <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. Everyone was talking about it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I try to do. I really just tried to like watch what I ate because I, I was really afraid of tracking then. Like I was definitely afraid of like tracking just because I had done that before and it caused me to restrict and it caused like similar to binge eating behaviors from it. So I was, I did not want to track all of 2018. And then by the end I was working out like three days a week. So like nothing like the program, but like some cardio mixed with like a little bit of like strength, not not much. I didn't really know much, but it was just that. It was like about like three days a week, and then I was like intuitive eating in my head. <laughs> sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that you bring up the mindset switch. I think that's a really key unlock for both everyone listening right now, but also in the program, you know that mental health is so important. And being in a place where you value your health first and you're looking to make the changes over time, you I could tell coming in, you were already and you had already gone through a lot. Like you had gone through the diets, you had gone through the phases of losing it, and mm -hmm. you were ready to like really figure out, okay, what is it gonna take to figure this out and do it in a sustainable way. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why you are where you are today, because you had that amazing mindset going into it, which I mean, I the same thing happened to me in terms of like, it. sometimes we have to go through some crap to figure out that there's, <laughs> that the slower way is better. But I'm just, I just think it's a really great mindset journey you've had as far as like, first of all, that longevity and sustainability, but also realizing like, you can feel good at your weight and accept your body, but also want to change and also want to improve your health. They're not mutually exclusive. Um, because I agree with you right now. Um, it's not just about like losing weight or looking a certain way um, or like ha having fat loss be associated with being more attractive or anything, right? It's like feeling good and, and you can do that at a heavier weight or a lighter weight, but being healthy and really having that goal um, I think that it's great that you were able to say like, I worked on myself, I really accept my body. Yes, I still have some off days, cause like who doesn't? Mm -hmm. But now I'm ready to like move forward with the next step um, for my health. I think that that's also like a huge mindset um, breakthrough that you had. So in terms of when you when we first started working together, in terms of your nutrition and when you started the Petite Power Program, what were like the biggest things you changed? Like in the first few weeks, what did you change? Okay, so like the biggest thing, well, the two biggest things were one, the amount of protein I had to eat, and two, <laughs> the water. Yeah. So those were like the two biggest ones because like going into it, I like it's funny because ironically, like a few weeks before I even like joined the program, I had been talking to a coworker, telling her that I don't, I don't really like protein. I was like, not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, water, I always drank, but pretty much like only drink water, but I didn't drink that much. Those were like the two, like when we went over the nutrition and you're like, oh, this is, you know, putting the whole PFF out there. I'm like, oh, I'm like, this makes sense. Cause I completely cut out like a whole, group from like yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. awesome okay so protein and water and then when you started following the program were you doing tons of cardio do you feel like you like what was the physical changes or not physical changes but the the um fitness changes that you started doing so exercise when wise? I Exercise wise, I was pretty much doing essentially a cardio day like just one day of like hit pretty much and then the other two days I would do Instagram workouts like I would follow like us you know I had there was like an Instagram people and I would either do like an arm day and like a leg day and that was it mm -hmm. like basically an arm day a leg day and then a hit day and that was that was essentially my old <laughs> program <laughs> yeah way of doing things mm -hmm. 
and then when you moved into Petite Power, obviously I know the answer for people who have are not familiar with the program. Did you feel like it was a lot of cardio? Did you feel like it was unsustainable to do, or did you feel like it was a uh, it was easy to follow and and not you know a crazy amount of exercise? It wasn't bad. Like um, the program itself, it was so the first I'm, I believe like the first four weeks, it's like four full days, and then you add the fifth day like in, but. Um, mm-hmm. It was very easy to grasp. Like it didn't feel like too much. It didn't feel um, like it wasn't doable because like you kind of start at your own level. And I like that because before I was either pushing myself too hard where I didn't want to go to the gym the next day. And like yeah. um, in your program, I felt like I could do it. Like it, was, it wasn't bad. It was easy to follow and I didn't feel like it was too much at all. It seemed awesome. it was very sustainable. <laughs> That's great. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, I think a lot of petite women will we tend to think that we need to like do cardio every day and like run our butts off in order to lose fat. But I think you're a really good example example of not having to increase the intensity or spend like hours in the gym every day to kind of move in the direction of your goals. In terms of your nutrition, when we first started working together, did you you know you started increasing your protein, which made a huge difference, but Did you restrict any food groups from then on or cut any like foods out at all? Or was it mostly just learning like sustainable um, moderation and portions? That was like the more refreshing part about the nutrition aspect, because like um, in the past, like I, you know, you have you label the things in your head as like good food, bad food. And well, going into like our first like nutrition call, like I didn't really know what to expect um, because like, you know, it's easy to be like, oh, don't eat this, like don't eat. And like, I hear it like all the time, like you can't eat that much sugar. You, you have to clean your diet and like eat broccoli. But um, yeah. <laughs> it, like it was, you put it in a, like when you explained it, you put it in a way where it kind of, it clicked. Like I, I hear it a lot. Like I know like you said it, like it did click. Like, I just had to essentially eat enough of like, you know, the protein, carbs, fats and stuff. Um, and like build, billing meal. Whereas before I was so, like I restricted myself on like something as like white bread versus like wheat bread. I focused way too much on like something like that where you made it seem like everything is okay as long as like meat, you know, the standard, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did that change how, like, how did that show up in your life for you? Was that really life changing for you to be able to feel like you could eat foods that were bad previously or like, how did that feel? I mean, it was kind of, um, it put it like, it took a lot of stress off of eating. Cause I think before that food was always on my mind. Like it was kind of like, it was, constantly there like I have to eat less or I have to eat this and not that you know um but when like I learned how to eat like you know like through you I guess um it was like it was it suddenly I didn't have to think about it like I didn't have to think about nearly as much just because now I was like by like the first week of eating the way like that you were like teaching I noticed that I wasn't constantly hungry and that like I wasn't craving all of these things that before I would be craving and that if I did, I could have it and it wouldn't be like the end of the world. And then I would like the fact that I still saw progress throughout the whole thing kind of like encouraged me more that like, okay, this is working. Like this, this makes sense. And like, it's funny because like you think like weight, like weight loss is hard, but it is to an extent, but you made it feel really easy. I think too, cause you had, you came in with that right mindset. It felt easier because you were ready to give yourself the space to learn and grow. I feel like it's weight loss can be really hard when we have like crazy expectations or we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to see results really fast. But you were just in the, you somehow you, you were, well, you're an amazing person, but you just somehow you were like in the right place to really like for this program. And I think mentally you really benefited in that way from it. Oh, I wanted to ask, did you track macros and for how long before you transitioned off of macros? Yeah. So at the beginning it was tracking and, um, I pretty much tracked throughout the entire time we worked together, which was from February 20, 
18 to like around September around yeah. that time yeah um so I tracked it then and then afterwards I it, it, I wasn't tracking it like through the numbers anymore I was just kind of like eyeballing like the plate making sure yeah. like, each one was like met you know I did stop tracking and then this year I did start tracking again when I like started to like mm -hmm. lose weight again because I did yeah. take about like a break throughout the holidays because I didn't really yeah it was the holidays <laughs> it's good to do maintenance blocks too and just let mm -hmm. your metabolism do its thing um did you find because you said before um like a few years ago you were really nervous to track because it you know mm -hmm. just mentally a lot of women are worried about that and it can be triggering but how did you feel once you got into it and you understood it like saw it as more of an educational tool how was your mindset while you were tracking did it feel easier? Like, what? Well, how did it align or not align with your expectations or the fears you had about it? At the beginning, I was wary of it um, because, like, before I wasn't really tracking macros; I was tracking calories. Right. Um, so I was just going like with the number um, that the calorie calculator had given me. Yeah. Um, and then when I transitioned to tracking macros. Like you are tracking the macronutrients. The number I started tracking with wasn't like necessarily like the biggest number. Uh, so I was wary at the beginning because like because of that, I'm like, am I gonna be full? Am I gonna be hungry? But then once you like start meeting each macronutrient, like you know you're like hitting each macro, mm -hmm. you realize that you're not hungry, and then it kind of like that's when it all really clicked. Like when I didn't feel hungry because before I was maybe eating like definitely less than what I was eating when I was trying when I tracked with you but I was always hungry but I also yeah. realized that it's because I was eating really unbalanced that like switch in the mindset did help me like get over the fear of tracking and then it became like just another thing I like, yeah. like I didn't even really think about it as tracking it was just like kind of like logging your food yeah so it sounds mm -hmm. like it it kind of reassured you that you weren't dieting it wasn't about mm -hmm. being on a diet right it was just like improving the composition of the actual foods you're eating so that you mm -hmm. can feel full and you can have a you can get your metabolism to speed up and a lot of people are end up actually with eating more calories but just more of the things that are going to keep them full and healthy and and moving towards their goals so and, and also it's awesome that you got to have a period of time where after you tracked for a bit, you could transition into like normal intuitive eating again, but with that new knowledge of like, this is my portion size, this is how much protein I need. And that's what we generally want. I mean, unless you have a really concerted effort like you are now and you're, you're going back to tracking to lean on that as a resource, which is totally common. It's great that you can just go off of the tracking when you want to do a maintenance phase and and just trust that you know, okay, I have this education now, I'll be able to eat and put together PFF meals without like stressing too much, right? Yeah, and it's like very, I don't know, it gives me a lot of peace. Like right now, like with the injury, I'm mm -hmm. obviously like not working out to the extent that I was before because of um, my leg. But yeah. um, now it's like, it's interesting because before I would have been freaking out about that. Right. And like now, it's kind of like I've just been eating, you know, normal. Yeah. And I've been fine. I've been, I've maintained because essentially what I'm doing since I can't really like do much with my leg. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about like, how, do you feel like nutrition mostly drove your results or mostly exercise or a combination? Definitely a combination. Like yeah. nutrition is what like completely change everything so like if one overweights the other it's definitely nutrition but the exercise definitely like helped keep me motivated and keep me on track in that regard so where are you now like tell us <laughs> where you are mentally now like i know you're injured so it's your it's actually a really it could probably be a tough time but in the <laughs> grand scheme of like your whole fitness journey and like the years and your weight loss like where are you now versus when where where you started oh god when i started like it just felt like a mountain that I could not climb. Like it, like it felt like way, way far away. <laughs> um, yeah. But like now, I'm very happy. Like I'm very happy with where I am. Like I have, like obviously I have goals, um, but like I am perfectly fine right now. I can like I could tell like, the difference. So definitely, like, I'm more confident. It's something that I don't have to worry about, which is nice. Because before, I feel like. 
like health and like fitness kind of just loomed over me. Like all the time was something I was constantly focusing on. And now I feel like I can like step away from that and kind of just focus on my own, my personal life everything so it's not something that like weighs over me i never wanted like fitness to be like the center focus of my life that like now it's become more of like a way to help me and my mood like i that's how i got injured like i went running <laughs> and like i worked out in the morning and then in the afternoon i was like you know what i feel like going on a run yeah <laughs> that's so nice um, now it's more something i enjoy doing and um of course i you know, have goals that I want to reach that are just like more personal, but I'm happy where I am right now. It's not like I need to change anything. And I feel like I can take my time with it too, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It makes me so, I'm just so proud of you, like watching your <laughs> glow up over the last few years. And just every time I check on you, it just looks like you're like doing so great and you're on that next thing, but you've always had that level of like, I feel like you've had that level of peace throughout the whole thing. Like, you know, you're going to get there, you know what you need to do. And it's, it's more just enjoying the process now and, and taking care of yourself, which is so nice to see. Oh yeah. Like once I got uh, out of like the mindset of basically having like the expectation of I need to lose weight by my birthday or I need to lose weight by like this holiday or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it definitely like took a lot of stress out of it in general. Like th th I think like before when I lost weight and then gained it all back, I had that like, I need to lose weight before this date type of thing. And then I gained it all back. If I would have just taken my time and maybe tried to learn more, maybe I would have kept it off. I don't know. But um, now like just learning it and like just knowing that your body will change no matter what it's like, fine it like takes a lot of stress out of it so what would you give <laughs> as a final question what advice would you give to anyone in the short girl gang who has not done petite power doesn't you know hasn't learned all of this yet um and they're and they're right where you were at the beginning looking at the mountain and feeling like super overwhelmed what would you tell them well for one try to be as forgiving with yourself as much as possible and I, I think that's like the mindset I accepted when I started it just because I don't know I think over time I had been so harsh to myself like with what I said you know like the the language that you tell yourself like in the mirror and stuff like that and it, it didn't make the journey any easier <laughs> like like speaking to myself that way so I think the first thing is to be as forgiving with yourself as possible there's gonna be ups and downs throughout the entire journey it's not gonna be easy <laughs> um, yeah so that's like the first step after that like really trust the process and be patient and to not like go into the rabbit holes of just like following anyone I don't know I think like be specific with who you choose to like take advice from like with you I, like I it, you, I went into it wary because I didn't know what to expect but then like mm -hmm. learning from you the fact that you do have all the certifications for it and some people that are like aren't are on Instagram may not like you know checking for like the credibility behind like what people are saying um but like journey specific just be patient to really listen to your pff advice <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it <laughs> like it's like it really did, like it's funny because i see it like all, like on your page all the time and when people have asked me about it i feel like i sound like a spokesperson for your program <laughs> Like, I mean, I got a lot of people at my job on it, which is really funny. I know. Um, I feel like I always have coworker, your coworkers messaging me saying like, I work with Jenny and she's just like radiant every day. Like, what did you do? Yeah, I mean, you I put like, in the work, but they know, like they've all messaged me. I feel like so nice. But <laughs> yeah, so like that's another thing. I call like the BFF advice and like drink wa water. Mm -hmm. water and sleep <laughs> that those are like the at the top of like the health advice i guess can you explain really quick what pff is to anyone who's watching this and doesn't know <laughs> <laughs> so pff i'm not a spokesperson <laughs> but um pff is essentially a very balanced way of building up your meal there's like your proteins your fats your carbs balanced meal essentially uh, and basically what it does like when it goes into your body is that it like stabilizes you like yeah your blood sugar mm -hmm. and yeah. um that well yeah that's, <laughs> that's yeah 
And did that, did you find that basically, so you were no longer basically eating like carbs alone, right? You were always mm -hmm. eating them to all the three food groups together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's interesting because like now I, like when I even pick up a snack, like I'm very conscious of like what I'm eating in that sense. Yeah. Like, oh, like I should eat, I should add yogurt to this. <laughs> yeah, like to get the protein. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, is there anything else that you wanted to mention to the short girl gang or do you think we covered a lot of the sort of breakthroughs for you? Other than like truly like trusting you, <laughs> like just, you oh. know, because <laughs> it, like, it's like, it's really nice how, like knowing that someone is very like well informed and like really just wants the best for you so, and yeah. like and and your goals like, especially like if they join your program specifically like to work with you like uh and like your team because i know your team has grown <laughs> um just knowing that like everyone's catered to your goals and like if you have a problem like i'm guessing like if i were to join now like, like let's say and I told you I had an injury, you'd work around that. Like you wouldn't just be like, oh no, go jump on your injured leg. <laughs> but, yeah, for sure, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, it's, kind of, it's really like nice. So, you know, they were like having that trust in like a coach. It was really nice and refreshing to have. You were like one of the very first people we had back then, like early adopters. Mm -hmm. So you you had to make much more of a leap of faith than people do today. Like there wasn't like hundreds of transformation picks back then. Like you. Oh yeah, that's why I stalked be. your page. Of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were like you were a part of that early phase. Mm -hmm. So having your trust back then means a lot today, and it meant it meant a lot back then too, as we were just like a wee little startup. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Jenny. No problem. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I think this is a really, really good um, recap of your journey. And I think it's really going to help the community and, and they'll feel more comfortable and more, more like empowered that they can do it too. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being vulnerable and offering up your story and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. No problem. I'm here. Awesome. I'm always here. <laughs> all right, you guys, that was my chat with Jenny. I hope you loved it and you learned something new. And mostly, I hope that you're sitting wherever you are behind your computer, your phone, and you're just feeling really empowered to make these positive changes, just like Jenny did in your life, and just know that it is completely possible for you. I would encourage you to not just sit there on it and feel that way, but to really take action. If you have any interest at all in learning more about the program that Jenny went through, take a look at the link down below. It's just check it out. I think it could be really amazing for you. And we have changed hundreds of women's lives over the course of the last few years through the Petite Power Method, just like Jenny. All right, you guys, I hope that you loved this interview. Please give it a like and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys next week.